Hey everybody, today Neo announced new pricing for battery as a service and I think that was actually a smart move and I'll explain why. Um, second of all, I'll be talking about uh, a little bit about the sub brands, so stick till the very end. But first, let me explain why I think the move today by announcing uh, new pricing or basically lower prices for battery as a service um, tells us more about, you know, what battery swapping is all about and one of the core hidden strengths of the NEO business model and the ecosystem that they have established. So, first of all, what makes this possible? It's what's unique to NEO. They are separating the battery from the vehicle. Um, the owner doesn't own the battery, so those who are subscribing for a monthly fee to battery as a service, they don't own the battery and that comes with some NEO services that they are taking care of the battery. They are um, monitoring the battery health and so on and so today's event was not only about announcing those pricing adjustments and by the way there have been some people in the past who have not been very happy with uh, BAS at least in China um, and you know Neo always tries to stress the fact that this is not about joining the price war and um, making price cuts in order to lure in new customers Although some of it might be the effects, and I've talked in previous videos uh, how I think NEO is currently doing quite some smart moves around establishing their positioning um, long term while giving some short term incentives in order to sell more cars, but you know, not really diluting the brand, not really um, cutting prices in order to stay in a competition. And yeah, so today's announcement is all part of that, but what I think is more important is. Um, why they can do that and i think that's not really talked about in the news and by most of the analyst takes that i've seen yet and again that's coming down to the ecosystem that neo is building and what's unique and how they are separating the battery from the vehicle uh, because ultimately um you know a key question of course from investors will be uh you know is this sustainable and is neo uh, losing money by that the fact that they are now um, giving consumers uh, better prices, lower prices, uh, shouldn't always taken be positive by investors, right? Uh, you want to make money on your investment. And I rather think it's actually showing what NEO has developed and uh, why they are able um, to do such a move. And, that's is, and that's, that is on a technological side um, that due to the fact that they are managing the batteries, um, they are able to possibly extend the lifetime of batteries. And today they had such topic on their presentations, you know, about how this is an issue for the EV industry in general and um, how, you know, it's carrying also some issues for the consumer, mainly that people are worried about the resale value of their cars or generally that um, the battery doesn't last as long yet as um, the, the car, the body itself. And you are now partnering up with CATL in order to develop better batteries. But again, why I think they can cut those prices on BAS is due to the fact that NEO is providing those managed services for batteries because that way, and also battery swapping itself, having less of an impact and a drain on batteries, um, possibly than supercharging it all of the time. And you know, I'm not one of those who's saying uh, EVs are bad because you only have a certain lifetime for the battery and, you know, afterwards it's gone. It's basically rubbish. Uh, I hear that sometimes, but the actual data is actually quite favorable for EV. They are lasting long, but um, of course there is some sort of a degradation, right? Now for NEO, it's more on the economic side. Um, while all of the competitors facing the issue that batteries are um, having less and less power over or, or power capacity over their lifetime. What NEO can do is they can unlock more economical value out of a battery pack than others can. And that's because, uh, you know, they are managing the, the, the batteries and also um, because because of their, the data points that are having, they see that they can give a longer war warranty, a longer um, promise for how much capacity a battery pack will have than the industry. And therefore, I think they are able, and their partners acknowledging this, they are able 
to um, depreciate and amortize the battery packs over a longer lifespan. And I think this way they can basically stretch out the battery as a service payments uh, because they see the data points in, you know, in the background. So they know exactly how long, how long they can use the batteries and um, how long they can keep up their promises. And I think one key point to understand here is that these batteries are not on the balance sheet of NEO, but they are on the ba balance sheet of the battery asset management company. And this is not a company that is wholly owned by NEO. They own like 20% of it, but also by partners, for example, CATR. And so this means that in order to take those price cuts today, um, all of these partners have started to agree that this is the case about uh, the data points that they have mentioned regarding the batteries, right? So this means in the end that um, if all of these partners agreeing, um, this has to be a sustainable solution and it is backed by data. And that ultimately uh, leads us to the fact that NEO can just unlock more value of a battery pack than others can simply because of this separation mechanism and the managed services that they have for batteries. And then in the, in the future, even more so, when they come out with better batteries together with CATL. And NEO decided they can pass this forward to consumers because that way the consumers will benefit. And of course, it's giving them an unfair advantage against competition, especially in times like these, when they can uh, lower prices, make technology more accessible, um, but they know they're not gonna suffer economically from it because they see the data points, because they know how long their batteries are lasting and because the batteries are basically in their own hands. And why is this not hurting NEO? Is because NEO is just selling those batteries basically to the battery asset management company. So they get the full price for the battery pack as has been the case before, but the, the company that is um, managing the battery assets, um, the, the best battery assets, this company will monetize those batteries over time and now on a longer uh, time span and period and um, can basically adjust their finances according to it. And all of these partners who are part of this battery asset management company have agreed to that because otherwise that wouldn't be the case. And so, you know, that's the way it works. Economically, zero implication for margins for NEO and on the, yeah, on the profitability of the business, they still get upfront the payments for the price of the battery packs from the asset management company. However, due to this full service ecosystem and so on, um, they can now give their consumers better prices and they know it's working because they have the data in the, in the background to back it up, right? And yeah, I think that's again, just demonstrating one of those key points where Neo can now start to monetize an aspect that took very, very long to build, right? Um, this ecosystem was not easy to build with all of the partners, with having 40 millions um, of swaps. All of that needs a long investment, a long-term view, and EO just did that, right? Um, they've demonstrated it. And in the future, I think we will see more and more of that, that they can unlock such economic value to the benefits of investors. And I think investors possibly don't understand it yet um, because they just look at this and see, oh my God, price cuts, um, terrible. Neo is joining the price war. Um, everything's not going well. However, as I just mentioned, I think um, it's actually a moat. It's actually something that only Neo has done and will be able to monetize in the future. Now, this brings us a little bit to the next point, which is this ecosystem will only grow bigger with the next partners. Um, 
sort of five partners that have signed up for battery swapping and will build out also their own battery swap stations. Like I mentioned in the last um, video that the surprise factor here is that not only NEO will put these resources into place and it's not only paid by NEO, but these are shared costs in the futures. Um, and, you know, this battery asset management company that I've just talked about um, has been just managing the assets of NEO so far. And this will change in the future. So this will be also for the sub brands and possibly the assets of the partners. So this is now getting an industry wide kind of battery asset management company. And you know, this is where people, they will see this and say, damn it, those people, Neo, they can lower the prices for consumers and we can't compete against that. And why can they do that? It's because they have this battery asset management company and they're, do they're doing battery swapping. And then it's starting to soak in the others because the only way for them to compete is also to be able to offer that because otherwise, what can they do? They can only have um, not the greatest margins, not the same margins as Neo, or they could cut prices, <laughs> you know, that's, that's all they can do. And so this is why I think Neo could come out um, here as a winner. And this system seems to be starting to proving itself. Now, I just mentioned the sub brand and I mentioned that I'm going to talk a little bit about the sub brand because we have now uh, some leaks that are posted on Twitter, like how the, the brand's going to look. And I mentioned in earlier videos that I'm reserving kind of my judgment for this brand. Um, and, you know, so far I don't think it's enough that I've seen whether or not to say I'm bullish on it or if I don't like it. What I have to say though, and I want to be fair here because uh, maybe you've seen me in other videos criticizing Elon Musk for the fact that he's going against competitors, EV competitors, and wants them out of business. And I didn't think that this is um, adhering to uh, Tesla's own uh, aspirations of driving the industry towards EVs, right? And now Neo's coming out with this new model here, the sub brand, and um yeah we've heard it before like they're they're going straight at tesla with this and you know i'm not sure if i like that to be honest um i mean it's fine to compare yourself with tesla and um it makes a lot of sense people can understand it better that you know it's in the same price range as tesla it's aiming at the same competitors and so on but ultimately i think um despite the fact that Neo possibly wants to gear up its marketing and become a little bit more aggressive for the sub brand and so on, I think they should also have some respect for Tesla and what they've achieved and for Elon Musk. And um, I really don't like too much if Neo just becomes another Tesla really, because what I just told you before about Neo and battery swapping and this whole ecosystem and those, you know, little business model tweaks, and how Neo manages to establish themselves in those uh, premium to luxury segments without doing joining the price war and so on. All of these smart aspects I really like about Neo. That's why, in the first place, I've invested. Um, that's why I'm hoping that the Neo brand itself will be a winner. But for the sub brands, if they just go and say, "Hey, we are just not a Tesla." Uh, you know, I mean, the looks, it's its a little bit different. It's not really one one copy of a Model Y, but you can see the form factor is similar. Maybe having some BMW headlights and um, backlights, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, if I'm into that. Let's let's see. Uh, it's I understand it's going to be the volume driver. But on the other hand, um, I'm really hoping that, you know, Neo could stay unique with their approach and what they're doing. And yeah, let's hope that will be the outcome. Just a couple of first thoughts about the sub brand. As I said, not finally decided yet. My ultimate judgment, I reserve it for when I see the price tag and the technicals and so on. But so far, 
that's the first take for now. Thanks for watching guys and see you in my next videos.